So let's look at how JPEG works. JPEG relies on a mathematical technique known as the discrete cosine transform. This is pretty sophisticated mathematics, so we're not going to go into the, the math details, so don't worry about that. And our summary, our very simplified summary, is based on this nice YouTube video by Randall Heyman. I really encourage you to look at this if you want a, a better explanation of how this works. But let's give this a try. So suppose the image that our camera sees through its lens is this grayscale image of a parrot. The same algorithm and approach would apply for colored images. We're just going to simplify it by using grayscale. And then suppose we place a grid over the image. You can think of the little squares there as the pixel elements in the chip that is sensing the light waves coming in through the camera lens. So here we have a 7 by 9 or a 63 pixel chip. An 8 megapixel camera would ha have approximately 8 million pixels. Now here's a, a picture of an image sensing chip from a Samsung camera. If this happened to be an 8 megapixel camera chip, it would have, it would contain on it 8 million light sensing sensors that would be sensing the intensity of the light coming in through the camera lens and representing that light as a number. Now we're going to represent each pixel by a number representing the brightness of the light coming in. So we'll let 255 represent maximum brightness or white zero will be minimum or black and in between we've got various shades of gray. So if we do that then we can represent the whole image by these numbers. So here's a 7 by 9 array of the numbers that I made up that uh, let's pretend represent each individual pixel in this diagram on the left. Of course remember that these numbers are actually bits. They're stored in binary form in the camera chip. Now suppose we look at one row of the image. So I'm going to take these numbers and I'm going to graph them as points on this two-dimensional graph. Next we'll take the average of those points. So 152 is the average and I'm drawing the red line to show that. And then we're going to do the math magic. The math uses a cosine curve to model or approximate the set of points shown on the graph. So here's an example. Suppose this red curve shown here is represented by this, this expression that involves the cosine of x. Our curve is just the transformation of the basic cosine curve that you learned about in high school math. Hence the name of this approach being the discrete cosine transform. So what you, the way we get the curve is we scale the original cosine curve and shift it to the right or left and we add several cosine and sine curves together. Doing that we can go from curves that look like this to one that looks like this. You can see that the red line is an approximation of the original set of points. It's not a completely precise one but we could actually make it more precise by throwing in more cosine and sine terms into this expression. That's the idea. So instead of representing that line of pixels with seven numbers we can now represent it with the three numbers that you saw in that expression. The seven numbers have been reduced down to three numbers or compressed. Of course as you can see easily here this is lossy compression because we can't recover the original numbers from the cosine curve. That information is lost forever. That's why we call JPEG a lossy compression algorithm.